Good morning, traders. This is the Silver Bullet Hour Trading Review for May 4th, 2023. This is done the day after. I was busy yesterday, didn't have time to do it. So, better late than never. So, anyway, we first wanted to start on the daily channel, channel the daily chart, see what we should be expecting and Yes, this is hindsight, but prior to this day forming, we could see as we had two bearish days after a swing high, and we were nearing the 20 day or previous week's low. And so you could see this candle's low and this candle's low. So that was that was the draw on liquidity. And then looking at dollar, you could see this was a bullish order block. Extend this over. This was a bullish order block. Price had come down, and even if you look at the previous previous uh, day, it came in, dug into that order block again. Look at the body; it's the median right there, uh, right here. Just maybe a little bit, a little bit lower, but not very much. So we're also anticipating it being a bullish day, which dollar did have uh, a bit of a bearish run but let's take a look as we drop down to the lower time frames and get into the specific silver bullet trading hour all right so looking at the one minute chart you can see this vertical line this is the 959 just so we don't cover up any of the 10 o'clock to 11 a.m eastern standard time price action and previously we were looking bearish we look over at dollar Dollar had been looking bullish after coming off of a low. Started making uh, higher lows and higher highs. And so, coming right into this 10 o'clock, we consolidate for a few minutes, and then we have this drop down. Price comes in, it just taps into that 20 day low, and then it pulls back, leaving behind a fair value gap. And if we measure down, just even down to that low again, you have five points that was offered up and went as low as, as 10. And I know ICT talks about having a minimum of six to 10 points between your entry and the potential um, draw on liquidity. But I would also submit to you that this candle right here, just piercing it, um, was that in itself that low was its own draw on liquidity so and on a trade like this it started to get maybe a little better entry maybe you didn't want to enter in the bottom of the fair value gap so if you were to measure this out and say i'll enter in as it retraces to to about 50 percent or a little bit less so you're not being too demanding of the market if you're getting in somewhere around here about half that distance you can see there's there's even more if we do the draw on this swing low. So anyway, that was a very clear um, opportunity that came pretty early, 10.16. And then all the while, you know, while dollar had been strengthening. And then if you look what happened after that, dollar turned and dollar started looking weak. And so if we keep coming back here, this is 10, 10.45. Uh, 1046, same time frame. What we've had is dollar showing weakness. So this this clearly dug in. We had a price break below, consolidated, moved higher, couldn't break the low here, moved up higher, and then we have an expansion candle, and then we have a fair value gap. Using the fib again, we go from this candle's low, to this candle's high. We say, okay, we want to get in somewhere. On this 25% retracement, maybe not the full 50%. Um, just I'm trying to not overly cherry pick this. You get in here and if you get in in this leg down, you'll get your five points before 11 o'clock. So there was the two opportunities in the AM session. Draw these out so that it's clear to see. Should be red. And this one. Right here should be great. 
And there you have it. There's your two AM session opportunities on using the one minute chart that were pretty clear. Now let's look at the PM session. Looking at the PM session, we can see, uh, well, first of all, I want to look at the dollar and what was the dollar doing? On the one minute chart, you can see just after lunch, price on the dollar really started to move higher again, showing bullishness. So if that's the case, then I would be expecting more bearishness for um, ES. And so at the, uh, right at the uh, two o'clock open, looking back, a lot of times we want to look for fair value gaps that are happening like right in between the time frame that we're trading in. But if we look prior to that, fair value gap right there. And if we're expecting bearishness and we see at after two o'clock, so right, right here, it just comes down, comes back up, comes down, comes back up. Again, we don't really have any clear value gaps. Now we do have a volume imbalance here. But these these are just wicking. But the bodies are minus, you know, these ones that occurred right at right before two o'clock, they're they're respecting this fair value gap. So anywhere in here, you could have gone short, and that would have been a good trade. And you know, clearly five points were easily available. But then continuing to um, look down at this 20 day low, which were the which was also coincidentally the previous week's low, that was still another drawn liquidity because what we could have been anticipating was that price was going to attack the current day low. And so especially since we had strength in dollar as you as noted here. So it's not considered tracing the market. That's what the fair value gap is that ICT has taught us. It's a way to enter the market when price is moving towards its liquidity. So you can see as price is finally broken down, we have a small fair value gap here in the PM session. And two times, these, this candle here wicks into it and this candle here wicks into it. There's two opportunities for you to get the five points. So if you didn't know this fair value gap and what price was doing, right between the, the opening of that two o'clock silver bullet hour. Once price was dropping down, you saw a dollar's strength and you were bearish, this would have been another great entry. So I hope this was helpful traders. I hope this is just showing once again, the silver bullet AM and PM session continues to deliver. And dollar is really helpful for analyzing which direction you should be looking for yes to go. I want to point out that there's a fair value gap right here that may have been of interest to some people depending on exactly how they're trading the model and in this one in this model what you see happening is you see this low taken out so you have a little bit of a liquidity grab not taken out but taken out a little bit and then price comes up leaving behind a fair value gap here and a possible entry here, which would have given you five points before the three o'clock hour. Now, would this trade have worked? Obviously, in hindsight, it would have worked. No problem. The one thing that I would note as well is when you look at you look at dollar as a whole, and you zoom out and you look at it, it's what it's been doing is it, you know from this high to this low, we were we were looking bullish initially in the afternoon, then price came up and I'll zoom back in after making this high, it came down, made this low, came back up. And, and in this low, first of all, it's broken down. So dollar in itself at this point was, you could make an argument was starting to show a little bit of weakness. Um, but again, to me, that's, this is where you just have to be nimble and try to read price action for dollar based on its own price action. So from, from this being an area of strength to this being an area of weakness, this little pullback and then price coming down and then price coming back up, you know, it's, it, it's below the 50% of this range. So you could, you could make an argument that price was starting to weaken in dollar um, because it was staying below the 50% of this range. 
just because they had this pull up here. And that would have been possibly a reason that you made a, would have uh, taken this long. And or maybe you don't look at dollar at all. And you're just looking at once, in a, like, like the 2022 mentorship model, once there is a liquidity taken out, a, a swing low swept, and then the price move up with a fair value gap, Maybe that was your reason for running because as far as liquidity draws, you could say, well, where would I have been looking for liquidity? Well, the most recent swing high, which is right here. So there to there, that gives you seven points of range, exceeding the six point minimum that ICT talks about. So there's your, there's your reason for just maybe looking at price structure if you're a person that does not really pay attention to the dollar. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you took more from the market than it took from you. May the ticks be forever in your favor. Peace out.